Jessica, I've been looking over your recent paper, and I have a few concerns. A few concerns? About what exactly? I see here that you reference Gamergate several times, and I'm concerned that you don't really understand what it truly means. I know exactly what it means. I learned all about it watching Feminist Frequency, those Gamergate jerks, threatening poor Anita like that. It makes me so mad. I hate men. Stop right there right now, young lady. But, you're a feminist aren't you? Don't you just hate how we're being oppressed? Exactly. In what way are you being oppressed? And, better yet, who is oppressing you? Men are, of course. Alright, name me one thing you are being prevented from doing by a man, and name who that man is. It's all men, just like she said in her videos. You didn't answer my question. What are you being prevented from doing? And who is stopping you from doing it? They're taking my rights, my equal pay, everything. I see you are yet another foolish young woman who has fallen for that con artist's sad stories. She is not a con artist. Anita Sarkis Ian is a hero to all women. I never imagined you of all people would be against her. I'm against anyone who would pretend to be a feminist in order to promote her own agenda. She isn't a real feminist. Many who are the real deal have spoken out against her and her extremist ideology. And I am one of them. She used the whole unfortunate business surrounding game developers Oe Quinn to spearhead her campaign of bigotry and intolerance. What are you saying? What I'm saying is that the world has been fed lies about Anita Sarkis, Ian and Gamergate. It's about time you got a reality check. Fanbot, two to beam up straight to the bridge. Beamware, hold on. Where, where are we? This is the ship of understanding. Here any question and be answered, but it also have a secret power that only a few know about. Ship of understanding? This is what everyone on campus had been talking about. Wait, what secret power? It is impossible to deny any truth that's spoken while on this ship. And, you, young lady are going to hear the truth whether you like it or not. What sort of truth? It is unfortunate what happened to Miss Quinn. Whether she slept with someone or not for a favorable game review doesn't matter. It is how an extremely vocal minority in the gaming community responded to what she allegedly did. The death and rape threats she received were horrible, a frighteningly overblown response to something so trivial. This antisocial, woman-hating minority hijacked a movement which had already been gathering steam before the whole scandal even started. The original Gamergate movement was about integrity and ethics in gaming journalism, and the movement made many great strides in getting several major gaming news outlets to change their ethics policies. Then the scandal with Miss Quinn hit the news, and of course the most vocal of the gaming community got the most news. Unfortunately, that group is also the same group that perpetuates the myth that gamers are serial killers and draining. Their death and rape threats against Miss Quinn hit the media, and the name Gamergate was invoked. Feminist extremist Anita Sarkis Ian picked up on the story, and came to Miss Quinn's defense. Due to her propaganda of misinformation the name Gamergate was dragged through the mud. And now most people believe the movement is a hate group that targets women. That is not true. Gamergate was never against women. Nobody did any fact checking, and so Gamergate was labeled something evil when in fact it was anything but. The truth is Gamergate, the real Gamergate, is behind a number of successful charities benefiting women and minorities. Anita Sarkis Ian and Feminist Frequency, on multiple occasions, lied to the media telling them that these charities are attacks against her and acts of harassment. She has actively tried to destroy the credibility and reputation of several YouTubers who are critical of her extremist ideology, and these same people set up charities that help young girls who are being exploited in places like Africa and Asia. She has gone before the United Nations, then gone to other countries urging the creation of laws that would destroy a person's freedom of speech. Anita Sarkis Ian is a threat to democracy democracy and true feminism, and the very idea that any feminists would actually support her is absolutely disgusting. But, what about her series Tropes vs. Women, pure reverse sexism and bigotry, an extremist view of feminism that is totally removed from reality? I never realized it, but I can't deny what you're saying is the truth. What have I done? What can I do? As a woman you can speak out like so many others are doing, 
and the more of you that keep spreading the truth the more people will hear you, eventually enough will hear you, and then they'll start taking a much closer look at what Anita Sarkis Ian and those like her are saying. They will finally see her for the peddler of hate, bigotry, and intolerance that she really is. But, what about the attack on women's rights? You want to be mad at someone for that? Be mad at the Republican Party, and evangelicals who are fighting to take away a woman's right to control her own body. On the issue of equal pay, I think you will find it's more of a problem in areas controlled by conservatives, and less an issue in areas controlled by liberals. While there are still issues, women enjoy more freedom today than they have ever had in recorded history. However, despite every attempt to stamp it out racial bigotry is still an epidemic in this country. Police violence against African Americans has reached intolerable levels. Some cities and states are talking about creating police oversight groups to police the police. If you look at the majority of social justice warriors screaming about being oppressed, you'll find most of them are young, white and upper class. They wouldn't know the first damn thing about what it really means to be oppressed. What it's like to live with the fear that a cop might jump out of his car and beat you for simply walking down the street in the wrong neighborhood. They cry and scream, making big spectacles of themselves on college campuses and on YouTube. And not one of them knows what it's like to life paycheck to paycheck. Not one of them wakes up in the morning and the first thought in their head is. How am I going to feed myself and my children today because rent is due and I don't have any money? Those are the people you were supporting when you wrote that paper. Young lady. I'm sorry, I'll rewrite it I promise. I didn't mean to be so hard on you, but you had to be made to see the truth. I understand now. I'm going to do my best to get the word out and let everyone know the truth about Gamergate feminist frequency, and social justice warriors. Good. The more of you there are the better off we'll all be. I'll get more people to join me, and we'll become a louder voice. A voice of reason and compassion. Good. Now let's get you back. You have a paper to rewrite. Fanbot, you can send up back now. Today's episode is likely going to be a very controversial one. To add further to this, let's hear from the creator of Chloe and the Professor. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Jake. You know, I, I really can't believe that we're having to talk about this in 2016. We're having to talk about, you know, women's rights in 2016, 2016. This is the 21st century. This isn't the 19th century. This isn't the 18th century. We're in the 21st century. We're in the 2010s. And we're still talking about this. We're still dealing with racism and bigotry in this country. And, you know, it completely floors me that, it, that we're still having this problem. That we've got cops that are killing people simply because of the color of their skin and they're getting away with it. You know, or, and that we have a, a political party that is waging a war on women and we've got you know, people in religion who are siding with them who are completely ignoring the teachings of their own holy text, their own Bible, and they're siding with them against, against people because they're different. And it... I just don't know. I mean... I created this series. I created Chloe and the Professor just to talk about stuff like this. And this particular thing about Gamergate is completely outrageous. Gamergate never was ever about attacking women. It was made that way by people who dragged the name Gamergate through the mud. Mainly, the mainstream media 
who listened to, to con artists like Anita Sarkeesian, and the gaming media, who just latched on to it and just ran with it. Gamergate, even before the whole thing with Zoe Quinn that took place, even before that, the, the, the beginnings of Gamergate was a, you know, pushback against a, a growing lack of integrity and ethics in gaming journalism. There were groups, IGN, you know, giant, IGN and, and not giant, Bob, but, but other, other groups, I don't have to name them all, you can look it up and you can look it up, but they were, they were basically taking money for, in exchange for making good reviews. I mean, remember the whole thing with um, GameSpot about um, Cannon Lynch and about the reviewer who was fired because he didn't give, give the game a good review when the publisher paid them for it? It's that. That's reason why Gamergate existed. And then this whole thing with Zoe Quinn happened and a minority within the gaming community, a vocal minority that the mainstream media latches onto, and it's the same group that makes them think that we're all a bunch of, you know, serial killers in training. They are the reason why the whole myth that video games make you violent is so pervasive. They are why that exists. They are a minority, they are a small minority in the gaming community, but they're extremely vocal. So they're, they get heard the most. And we're the silent majority. We don't talk out enough. You know, those of us who are sane, sane gamers, we don't speak up enough. And we need to. Because... People don't realize that Gamergate has been doing a lot of good stuff. And they're being attacked for it. They are running charities for women, charities for minorities. They're trying their damnedest to help people. And they're being attacked for it. There are several YouTubers who have charities going. And Feminist Frequency constantly attacks them, saying that these charities are personal attacks against them. Screaming to the mainstream media saying, oh, look how horrible these men are being towards us. Look, there are assholes out there. There are men who are assholes. Men who treat women like crap. They exist. There's no denying that. You know, I wouldn't do anything like that. You know, I like to watch porn. I like seeing women naked. I like games with scantily clad girls. I like hentai. I watch hentai. I watch porn. You know, I'm not going to deny that. But, at the same time, I wouldn't deny a woman her fair right to equal pay. I wouldn't deny a woman to full control over what she can do with her body, whether or not she can have an abortion or not. I wouldn't do that. I simply would not. Because I understand that where my rights end, another person's begins. And I have no right to say what this other person can and cannot do as long as they are not hurting someone else as long as they are not hurting people or killing people going out with a gun and shooting people as long as they're not going out and doing that I have no absolute say whatsoever and no one else does either and I don't care if you are a preacher I don't care if you are a congressman. You simply do not have the right to tell them what they can and cannot do. 
as long as it's not something that you know that that everyone can agree is bad you simply can't what the GOP is doing to women in the South what evangelicals are doing and, and evangelicals it's, it's bad enough that they are empowering this this bullshit it's further evidence that it's further proof to what I keep saying to everybody we no longer need religion we need to abandon it we need to push it away not the the message there are some there are good messages in religion there are good messages but then there's the dogma and it's the dogma that is dragging us down it's the dogma that is dragging society down and we need to abandon that i am a spiritualist i follow the law of attraction the law of one, Taoism, I follow those beliefs. And in those beliefs, you know, I know that there is a creator, there is a God. He is not, he is absolutely not what the Bible says he is. And I'll leave the subject of what that is for another video outside of this I'm not gonna get into get into that but it'll be a subject for another video that I'm going to do about about the law of one law of attraction you know what what those are all about and but it just You know, I just can't believe what's going on. What these people are doing. We're in the 21st century and we're still dealing with this bullcrap. Of course, I understand why it's happening. I just wish that it would get over with. Because we need to move on. We need to do... We need to move on. We need something better than this. And it's, we're going to get better than this. But I understand why we need this to come out now why we need this crap to come to the surface but in the end you know as was said in the show gamergate is not a hate group gamer nate gamergate is not about attacking women it's about integrity in gaming journal you know gaming journalism and the only persons who are promoting hate are people who follow Anita Sarkeesian you want to look for hate you want to look for bigotry you want to look for sexism look no further than her and her channel that's all I have to say thanks for watching and See you on uh, Chloe and the Professor next week. Bye.